Good day and good day. Welcome to yet another funky daily devotional. And today's verse is 1 Thessalonians 5.17, Pray Without Ceasing. Today's message is titled, Feast on the Word. Man shall not live on bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out from the mouth of God. Matthew 4, 4. The word of God is to your spirit as bread to your body. When your body feeds on physical food, it produces a physical power called strength. And when your spirit feeds on the spiritual food of the word, it produces spiritual power called faith. And just as you can't eat one meal and then feed on the memory of it for several weeks, you can't just remember what the word says and stay strong in faith. You have to read it. Even if you've read it a hundred times, you need to read it again. Try this. Close your eyes and see yourself slicing a lemon. Now stick that lemon between your teeth. And when I say three, bite down on it. So hard that the juice squirts into your mouth. One, two, three, bite! Chances are you have such a vivid memory of what it's like to bite on a lemon that your mouth is watering right now. But let me ask you this. Have you ever received any nourishment from that memory? No. Remembering the Word of God isn't enough. You must continually feed on what it says. Get out and read it. Go to church and hear it preached. One day you'll read a familiar verse, a verse you've read a thousand times before, and suddenly God will give you the greatest revelation you've ever had, a completely fresh revelation from that old familiar verse. And it's likely to be exactly what you needed to know about your current situation. Yes, you can feed on the Word that that is on deposit in your spirit. But remember this. You can't get continued results if you don't spend time in prayer and in the Word of God allowing the Spirit, the Spirit, Holy Spirit, to nourish you daily. Don't try to live on that memory of your spiritual, uh, of your last spiritual meal. Replenish the force of faith within you. Feast on the Word of God today. Scripture reading is John 6, 48 to 58. And we're going to read that in the NIV. 48, I am the bread of life. 49, your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply amongst themselves. How can this man give us flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day, for my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of my Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. And so we will go to commentation in the BLB. Let's go here. Commentation. There we go. And we're going 48 to 58. So we're going to be reading Matthew Henry. And we'll just let that load. And now we look for 48. Probably way down there, to be honest. We can actually go like this. We can search in the page. Uh, Find a page. We're going to type in 48. Where are we here? Verse 48. Okay, 48 to 51, so I'll read from here. Hmm. 
Okay. Christ having spoken on himself as the great gift of God and true bread, verse 32, largely explains and confirms this, that we might rightly know him. Here, uh, sorry. What happened? Everything moved and reformatted. Don't you love it when life does this? Okay, that Christ is the bread which nourishes and supports spiritual life is the staff of it as bread does uh, the bodily life. It is the staff of life, the doctrine of the gospel concerning Christ, that he is the mediator between God and man, that he is our peace, our righteousness, our redeemer. By these things do men live. Our bodies could better live without food than our souls without Christ. Bread corn is bruised, Isaiah 28, 28. So was Christ. He was born of Bethlehem, of the house of bread, and type of, typified by the showbread. That he is the bread of God, verse 33. Divine bread, it is he that is of God, verse 46. Bread which my father gives, verse 32. Which he has made to be the food of our souls, the bread of God's family, his children's bread. The Levitical sacrifices are called the bread of God. Leviticus 21, 21, 22. And Christ is the great sacrifice. Christ is... Uh, why did it move? That he is the bread of life, the bread of life, oddling the tree of life in the midst of the Garden of Eden, which was Adam, the seal of that part of the covenant. Do this and live, of which he might eat and live. Christ is the bread of life, for he is the true fruit of the tree of life. First, he is the living bread, he explains himself. I am the living bread, bread of itself. Bread itself is a dead thing and nourishes not, but by the help of the faculties of a living body. But Christ is himself living bread and nourishes by his own power. Manna was a dead thing if kept uh, but one night. It, it putrefied and bread worms. But Christ is ever living, everlasting bread that never molds nor waxes old. The doctrine of Christ crucified is now as strengthening as and comforting to a believer as it ever was, and his mediation still of as much value and efficiency as ever. Secondly, he gives life unto the world, spiritually and eternal life, the life upon the soul in union and God communion with God here, and in the vision, uh, futition of him, Hereafter, a life that includes in it all happiness. The manna did only reserve and support life, did not preserve and perpetuate life, much less restore it. But Christ gives life to those that were dead in sin. The manna was ordained uh, only for the life of the Israelites. But Christ is given for the life of the world. None are excluded from the benefit of this bread, but such as exclude themselves. Christ came to put life into the minds of men, principles uh, productive and of acceptable performances. For that he is the bread which came down from heaven. This is often repeated here in 33, 51, uh, 50, 51, and 58. This, don this denotes first... The divinity of Christ's person, as God, he had a being in heaven, whence he came to take our nature upon him. I came down from heaven, whence we may infer his iniquity. He was in the beginning with God. His ability for heaven is the firmament of power and his authority. He came with a divine commission. Secondly, the divine original of all that good which flows to us through him. He comes not only Katabas, that came down, verse 51, but Katabakoi, that comes down, he is descending, denoting a constant communication, a light, life, and love from God to believers through Christ as the manna descended daily. See Ephesians 1, verse 3, ammonia, to super all things from above. And 5, 
that he is the bread of which the manna was a type figure, verse 58, that bread was the true bread, verse 32, as the rock they drank of was Christ, so was the manna they ate of, spiritual bread, first Colossians or Corinthians 10, 3, 4, manna was given to Israel, so Christ to the spiritual Israel, there was manna enough for them all, so in Christ a fullness of grace for all believers, he that gather much of this manna will have none to spare when he comes to use it, and he that gathers little when his grace comes to be perfected in glory shall find that he has no lack. Manna was to be gathered in the morning, and those who would find Christ must seek him early. Manna was sweet, and as the author of the Wisdom of Solomon tells us, Wisdom, 1620, was agreeable to every palate, palate, and to those that believe Christ is precious. Israel lived upon manna till they came to Canaan. Christ is our life. There was a memorial of the manna preserved in the ark, so of Christ in the Lord's Supper as the food of souls. You know what's interesting is that God says the last days will be like the days of Noah. And God preserved the manna, right, to remind us of all his goodness through all his suffering that he overcomes, even when we are stuck in a dark <laughs> dank tank, right, tossed and thrown in the waves, God will be proficient and be our light and our substance and our nourishment. And it's not fair for me to say that that the ark was dark tank because God's glory filled that place and it gave life to all the animals. Heavenly Father, we just run after you and cling on to you. And Father, we break all the spiritual forces, Father, that are against um, us and your word and the work that you want to do, God. Let's turn a page to God's glory. Let's turn a page and turn a corner and follow you, God, from all wickedness, all evil. Let's turn a page from the enemy's hands. Make a slip right out of the enemy's hands that he may not hold, he may not find, he may not know. And Father, kick his butt. Kick all unclean spirits. Kick all... Um, uh, adversaries God kick all and anything that is not of your word that's not of your good kick it down kick it far stomp on it God and break the chains of the enemy father right now in the name of Jesus Christ I know this morning the internet wasn't working everything feels slow down and sluggish God and I pray that you would speed everything up to a holy rate Father, a rate that's that's in time and in line with you, God. Help us to wake up early. Help me to wake up early and have a fresh start with you, God. Not be sleeping in, staying up late. I don't like this routine. Why is it all your people, God, want to have fun staying up late into the night and then and then uh, and then being sluggish the next day? God, I want a good routine. I want a godly routine. I want a strong routine, Father. That's productive for your name. So help me to get up and about, God. Help me to have a wonderful breakfast this morning, God, because I put that off. I put you first. God, in my day, I want to go to devotions with you, Lord. I don't even want to be distracted by doing laundry every day when I do praise and worship. What the heck is with that? God, I want to give you undivided attention. Thank you, Lord, for your love, for your grace, for your uh, support and your divinity, Lord. I want to cling closer to you and respect you and do all the things, Father, that you call us to do now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a lovely day. Be uh, supported and loved and know that God loves and cares for you uh, most. We are all his favorite in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.